Companies Act. A special presentation by The Firm. India is the first country in the world to legislate a corporate conscience. On Companies Act today, we focus on Section 135, Corporate Social Responsibility. It's a new provision, and to find out how India Inc. is working towards implementing it, I have with me in studio today Ashok Gupta of the Aditya Birla Group and Chardul Shroff of Amartan Mangaldas. Gentlemen, to both of you, a very warm welcome. Section 135 says every company, public or private, or a foreign company branch in India with a net worth of 500 crore rupees or more, or a turnover of 1,000 crores or more, or a profit of 5 crore rupees or more, shall spend at least 2% of its average annual net profit over the three preceding years in pursuance of its CSR policy, or explain why it hasn't. This policy will be formulated and monitored by a board CSR committee, approved by the board and disclosed in the board's report. The rules and a subsequent circular specify that CSR activities must exclude activities undertaken in the normal course of business or those only benefiting employees and their families. Political contributions will not be considered CSR. All CSR activities must pertain to activities only in India. One-off events such as marathons, awards, charitable contributions, advertisements, sponsorships of TV programs, etc. would not qualify as part of CSR spend. CSR can be undertaken via a trust, society or company established by the company. If not established by the company itself, then the trust, society or company must have a three-year track record in doing similar work. The spend on building CSR capacities, internal or external, should not exceed 5% of total CSR expenditure in a year. Salaries paid to CSR staff and company volunteers can be factored into CSR costs. As for what qualifies as CSR activities, well, Schedule 7 contains a short list of 10 categories aligned closely to UN Millennium Development Goals. But in a February notification, the ministry expanded the list to include even activities such as setting up old age homes, animal welfare and public libraries. In a June circular, the MCA said the extended list can be liberally interpreted. And then it answers some yes and no questions that people have put to it, saying, would this qualify as CSR or no? And in saying yes, it has included all kinds of activities. Drivers training, giving medical and legal aid to road accident victims, consumer protection services, uh, renewable energy projects, slum redevelopment. All of these under that circular would qualify as CSR, even if it may seem a stretch. For instance, uh, this, uh, you know, giving medical and legal aid to road accident victims has come under preventive health care. You know, which is a bit of a stretch, stretch, but the ministry has said, we'll allow it, right? Is this a good thing that companies have been given considerable flexibility in deciding what qualifies as their CSR activity? I think there's a little history, and let me put it contextually to a question which was asked to the minister, Sachin Pilot, at the AGM of CIR. He had actually said that, treat this whole schedule as redundant. I'm going to change it and say, as the board of the directors may may desire. So that's full freedom. He, he wanted to give full freedom and that very same amendment went to the Ministry of Law and just shot down. So the Ministry of Law has obviously taken a view that you need specificity and you can't have the freedom to decide what you want. You have to do something which is conceptualized and specified because if this is section, the section says specified in Schedule 7. So that was the rationale of the Ministry of Law saying no. Subsequently, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs has now, on basis of questions asked, said we are going to liberally interpret this and we, we will receive the questions and interpret it if it falls in one or the other item under the seventh schedule. So that's the development. I don't think there's anything wrong in it as long as the expenditure is achieved on what the ministry considers as a corporate social activity. Okay. The, but, you know, anything could, could be construed if you look at the circular of June Anything could be considered But you have to get CSR. a clarification, Minka. What happens is that if they'd done this of their own suo moto and the government had not clarified, they would have been hard placed. So either I you go get a clarification. To the specific activities laid down in yeah. Schedule 7, yeah. or if I want to liberally interpret, interpret this, then I need to get some a, sort of a MCA nod like on this. Some sort of yeah. MCA correct, on this. Correct. This is good news for corporate India because it gives you great degree of flexibility to choose the CSR activity of your indeed. choice. It is indeed. And I personally feel that directors have 
now okay. a greater freedom hmm. to choose the right project or activity which they would like to spend money on and see meaningful difference to the society. It is pretty good. Okay, I want to then come into how you go about as a company doing this CSR. Uh, what qualifies as the cost of CSR, which has been capped at five percent of the actual CSR spend of two percent itself? Can you outsource the CSR? Can you, not being able to avail of a tax deduction, which is fairly clear in this budget, uh, choose to give the money? that 2% to a charitable organization and avail of some degree of tax deduction at least through that route. These are the many questions I have. So let me start first with you, Mr. Shawfon. How do you structure this? What is the structure that most people are using? Do it in-house, set up your own trust, do it with an external trust. What's preferable? I think this mandate of the section is clear that the company has to do it. When you read 135, 1, 2, 3, it is quite clear that the board of the company has to constitute a special committee called the Corporate Social Responsibility Committee. Yeah. Three or more, one independent director. That's the constitutional framework. Right. So the first step is always to set up a CSR committee. After that, there are three obligations which are imposed on that committee. The committee has to formulate a CSR policy. It has to recommend an expenditure. This is very important and it helps us interpret the subsequent questions. Recommend the amount of expenditure to be incurred. So the company decides this is the expenditure that I'm going to incur on these issues of CSR. And it has to monitor the CSR responsibly. There's been a lot of confusion in the members of the public and companies that is it the obligation of a third party, namely is it an object of a trust society, section 8 company, and is it that I hand over this activity? So can or, you outsource it to use Spain? Correct. If I outsource the entire CSR or only outsource the execution of the CSR, what is the mandate of the law? So my first point was that it was not intended to be mandate, mandated, but because of the hue and cry, the lack of expertise, XYZ, they permitted it to be extended to their own trust foundation society of section 8. So they didn't really intend it to be given to a third party. But those trusts also had problems because if the company didn't have the expertise, their own trust company created for doing CSR would not have it. So then they carved out a further process said that, no, you can use these type of companies of third parties. As long as they have a three That track is track. all in the rules. Correct. Okay. There are two so separate let me ask rules. my question. If, if as a company I was to set up a trust, yes. okay, I have, that's option yeah. way. And option B is there is an external trust that exists. Yeah. Cry, Akanksha, yeah, any yeah, one of yeah. them. If I make or put money towards the trust that I have set up, can I get a tax deduction if that is a charitable trust? And if I get a tax deduction, would it still qualify as part of my CSR spend? Equally, if I put money to an external trust, which would have otherwise given me a tax deduction a year ago, can I avail of that tax deduction and still count that towards my CSR spend? What's your interpretation? My interpretation is yes. If in I both cases? In both the cases. The reason is, so. you know, what are the requirements of CSR? Number one, both the acts are not interrelated in any way. Hmm. All I am required to spend 2% on CSR related activities, either by myself or through a trust. So if there is a charitable trust to answer your question. Internal or external? Or internal or external. Right. Who are exclusive and satisfying all the conditions as are laid down by section 134 and the rules framed there. And are namely, that they are exclusively engaged in activities relating to CSR in schedule seven. Hmm and that I'm able to generate project report, then I should get deduction, and if this trust or society is registered under the Income Tax Act, I should get the benefit of the contribution made to society like this, and yet qualify myself for CSR spent. So if till 2012 or 13, I was making an annual contribution to let's say CRY or Akanksha or many well-known such efforts, right? And I was getting a tax deduction on my contribution to them. I can continue to do that now in FY15, get the tax deduction, and still categorize this spend as CSR spend. That's your understanding of it. I with, minor, with minor modification. That you have to monitor, etc. You I have to it. have a project. You have to be involved in where that money absolutely. is going, etc. But you can that. still avail oh, of the tax deduction and what, still count it as CSR. Absolutely. I don't yeah, agree that's at all. That's the question. Can you avail of the tax no, deduction of no, that, that comes no. through a charitable co contribution? No. I'll tell you why. Just call read it CSR. the clarification very carefully. Contribution to a corpus trust society, section 8. Now, this is not a charitable trust. It is not a charitable trust. Section 8 is a not-for-profit company. It is not as if it's a charitable company. It's not a company to do charity. These are very specific because they have not appended the word charity before these words. Hmm. There can be a business trust. There can be a CSR trust. Those are also types of trusts. So what is contemplated by this clarification is that these companies will qualify 
as CSR expenditure. Normally, setting up a trust is not an expenditure. It is a it is a capital kind of payment for starting up a company. It's like capital of the company. So when you spend for creating, say, the capital of a Section 8 company, which would normally be a wholly owned subsidiary, then that then capital, that would, be capital would be considered as CSR. CSR expenditure. Now, after this creation has happened, let's test it further. Section 135, one comes into play. What does it say? Company has to create a policy. Company has to recommend expenditure on CSR. And if you take schedule, the strict interpretation will be contributing to a trust society. Is it CSR? It's not in schedule 7. So you're saying if it is a charitable contribution on which you can avail of a tax deduction, it would not amount to CSR? It would be available in you're charity. It, would it will CSR. not be available yeah, in you're CSR. You're too much <laughs> in this. Simply because I made a contribution to charitable trust, and that trust is uh, doing those activities which are specified no. in Schedule 7. Okay, no, no. Because opinions. I get a benefit. We have two opinions. Minka, we, we have two opinions. There's, there's, on a reading of the notes and clauses of Section 37 amendment in the Finance Bill, it is quite clear that it will not be allowed. Because they are even worried of, they are even extending it by saying application of income. So they are saying that I don't allow it because it's an application of income and not an expenditure. So the rationale and logic of income tax in 37, which Shadul has been referring, mm -hmm. when you are claiming this as a business expenditure, correct, correct. very clearly, Fast. I'm not finding fault with it. Yeah. I yeah. didn't say that I can claim deduction 100%. No. I didn't say that. Only whatever 50% deduction no, that's the, available if you Even are... today, even today I can make contribution to a charitable yeah, trust and, and get, get deduction. deduction. Yeah. But Why would it make any difference? Okay. Well, we'll agree to disagree on this. Yeah, Clearly, exactly. we have two, uh, you know, sort of uh, extreme views here. I think some of uh, some of the questions that many companies have been asking is, how do we structure this? If we're a small company with just profits of five crores, we cross the threshold, we have to do 2%. Should we do this on our own? Should we do it through a charitable contribution? Should we pool money with other companies? What is it that you're, you know, t telling companies to do? How, how should small companies go about meeting the CSR requirement? I think for small companies, our recommendation has been don't start setting up your own trust because you can use other trusts okay. and you will have the ability also to then pool other people's CSR 2% value in creating a much larger project than what you could achieve by your own. What are some of the implementation challenges, Mr. Gupta, that you've come through uh, well, me, in being able to yeah, sure. You know, one factor, of course, is very valid, but second factor also is smaller company with one unit, smaller unit yeah. operating in a society. Intention is that even if that amount is small, but he would like to be seen as if it is done by them, sure. society. So there are many, many considerations, yeah. not only one, there yeah. are many considerations to be considered even for a smaller company. Having said that, there will be teething problems in terms of, like there are issues which have been thrown open. There is a list, first of all, yeah. to do seven. You have to fit in there in any case. Liberally interpreted. Liberally interpreted, that as Shadul is saying, you don't want to play foul when you're doing a social responsibility. <laughs> you want to still yeah. f fall in line. Second is tax angle we have to look at. The structure yeah. angle, we have to also have to monitor it. And, and sincerely, if I believe in that activity, I really would like to know where it is going, how it is going, how it is accounted for, what progress I'm making, what is the base level, how did I achieve directionally. How are you structuring all of this? Are you doing it through trusts that are owned by the group? Are you doing it through trusts uh, you know, owned okay. outside the group? Are you doing a combination of both? Especially for a large group as yours, you would be using multiple routes, routes. as opposed to just one, right? Yeah, it is combination, because quite naturally. For us, for instance, we are operating a remote area. We have school, we have hospital which are also thrown open to outsiders right. and we are not charging full cost okay. they subsidize so it makes a lot of sense because it's used by my employees it's used by outsider this CSR in many ways yeah and as long as it's not exclusively used by yes. employees you yes. can still count it towards Precisely. CSR right yeah. yeah all right companies act a special presentation by the firm Corporate India has not quite welcomed the new CSR provision with open arms. In fact, it has likened it to a tax, as the expenditure on CSR is not tax deductible. That too, a tax imposed via a company law. That, many lawyers say, is sufficient grounds for challenge. If it is considered to be a mandatory requirement, that you must spend that kind of money, an explained part is taken away. Hmm. Then there is a strong reason for you to say it is a ma matter of tax. On the one hand, you're not giving tax deductibility. Secondly, you're asking me to do it, but which is not the case here. He's saying that we are encouraging every company to spend at least 2%. Or if you can't spend, please explain this away. Okay. So now, there is I, no... I hold a different yeah. Let me tell you why. It's the language of the section. This issue was debated in the parliament. They asked for a modification of the word shall ensure, may ensure, and hmm. they rejected it. 
So the words used in subsection 5 of 135 is shall ensure. Hmm. Now shall is a word of mandate. Shall is not a word of choice. So tomorrow, I'm saying that this is probably going to get tighter and tighter because the way they have drafted, the, the way the section is drafted, it is not an optional process. Shall ensure doesn't mean may ensure. Yeah, and yet when in the proviso they say yeah, yeah. that if the company fails to spend such amount, the board shall in its report made under clause yeah. whatever, whatever, specify the reasons for not spending the yeah. amount and there is no penalty provision in 135 no, specifically. I, I disagree so, with you yeah, there so also. Th I'm, I'm just asking. I'm, yeah. I'm not uh, no, I'll tell you holding why. a view, but I'm See, asking. If the, if, the, if the interpretation of 135.5 is shall means mandatory, correct? Then when you read the proviso, shall would mean that it was mandatory to spend. You didn't spend, but you explained. I'm going to punish you. It's section 450 is intent to penalize. But it's an omnibus. Uh, you it know, is, but that also is a penalty. And it is, it is, therefore, there is not as if it's non-actionable. So you're non saying actionable. it's on the face of it comply Correct. or explain, but it is not comply it, or yeah, explain. It, will get, it get, is comply yeah. or be punished. Yes, a monetary punishment, not a crime. Yeah. But a monetary fine nevertheless, which is very wide-reaching. The section 450 actually speaks of three categories. The company, officers in default, and any other person. So your NGO can also be liable. Comply or explain, that's the intent of the legislation and nobody can force companies to do something. And what if they? No, the question <laughs> is, Shell, and uh, Shardul is master of this, uh, you know, with courts have interpreted Shell as may and may as Shell. So no, they, so they the, have, my, my depending point on Ashok, the intent, my point it's not this. this. So I'll not be carried away by first Shell. First three years, I feel the policy will be liberal because there's enough indication in the rules. But after three years, this will be tightened and shall be mean shall. Well, well, nobody stops anybody from challenging it three years down the line if it yeah, becomes if a forced situation. Yeah, they're going to make it mandatory, situation. somebody's going to stand up. Yeah. Saying yeah. you can't have, well, you can't do that, right? Yeah, you simply okay. can't do it. If you spend 4% this year, can you carry on 2% uh, to the next year? I don't think so. Because this is a bare, uh, basic minimum. They are saying at b you have a choice to spend more, but you can't claim set up of the next year. You are sure about that? That I am pretty sure of it. Mr. Shah, I if I spend 4% so. this year, suppose I am setting up a school, yeah. the capital cost of which will be high. Yeah. I am spending much more than my 2% that I need to. I spend 4% this year. Can I next year say, look, I already no. spent 4% in the previous year. Can I be excused from the 2% requirement? No. no. Because it speaks of contextually the net profit of each, each financial. Okay, fine. So we are clear that you cannot carry and, forward. And secondly, you will have a shareholder unrise. I mean, uprise on this one for this reason that they know the shareholders know that this is not going to be allowable in calculating business income. You are already told that warned of that in the finance bill in Section 37's amendment. So you know that the shareholders are going to frown on two percent going away. Then you say, no, no I'll spend four percent. So but four what do you do? You, it's a capital cost. You no, may have to spend some more I have in a one simple, year. I have a much simple solution. If you follow an impress system of accounting, basically what do you do? I have budget X because you're supposed to monitor expenditure. You can give, let's take a hypothetical project to say uh, 12, 120 lakhs. Hmm. You pay 10 lakhs every month and you pay it only on a reimbursement basis that if the person NGO has spent, only then I will give. You not have any overrun in the next year. If I want to commit a project, which is a very important project for the society, that may entail investment of more than 2%, be so, so be it. So long as I have the liberty that next year I don't have a project, I said, okay, 2% I want to spend, I don't want to spend it. I don't have any project, project is only would require 0.5%. I'll explain. Interestingly, Section 135 also applies to foreign companies in India. The rules include foreign companies as defined under Section 2, those having a place of business in India and conducting business in India in any other manner. For such foreign companies in India, the CSR committee shall comprise an authorized representative as per Section 380 and a nominee. But can Indian law apply to a company not incorporated in India? The definition of a foreign company clearly states that it is incorporated outside India. Hmm. Section 1 of the Companies Act clearly says it applies only to the country of India. And secondly, it also says that who are covered, it doesn't cover a foreign company right. in the opening. Then when you go to the chapters and the section 379, hmm. the whole of the chapter in relation to foreign bodies corporate clearly states that, and, and th it has a link with how, how the regulations on CSR has spread. It basically says only those type of foreign companies which are 50% held by Indian Indians, entities, yeah. natural Indians or maybe entities, bodies, yeah. corporate, any of them, those are the companies regulated by that entire chapter. Hmm. That entire chapter in relation to section 380 puts a prescriptive rule as to what they have to file. Hmm. And one of the key provisions stated therein that you must have a person resident in India to Got accept it. process of service 
and you need to appoint somebody who's sort of nominated by the company. So if the chapter says the whole of the sections relating to the, to the foreign companies only applies where there's a 50 percent ownership, then it is that chapter which is relevant and not the definition of a foreign company. I'm saying on both counts this fails. If it is not required to comply with section 380, hmm. then the rule of having directors doesn't exist. And if the rule of director doesn't exist, the CSR committee cannot be constituted. Hmm. And if the CSR constitution is not permissible, because the then section how doesn't the apply. Of 135 how can the 135 apply? apply? Nonetheless, so it, the rules include foreign companies. So it is ultra virus in my view. So uh, this is a history. <laughs> no, no, there is not a history. This is a subtle point. All the rules clarified is and intended, basically, is what uh, Shardul mentioned, 379, the companies in which not less than 50% are held by Indians. Let's put it as a person. Hmm. And there again, they're saying there's a relaxation in the rule. One is nominated by the foreign company, and secondly, the person nominated under that chapter itself. Yes. Yeah. It it says it because eight. there is an obligation, yeah. in a manner of speaking. So therefore, they had said there is a committee can be formed yeah. easily, yeah. and they're not taxing outside profit. They're only saying business India profit. Huh. So therefore, I mean, one can draw a very fine distinction by applying the yardstick what Shardul has mentioned and trying to build up a case for challenge. But if you were to look at the entire objective in mind, that what you are trying to tax and how are you going to tax, you will find there is no different from a mayor requiring you to spend that kind of money or explain. Okay, so I'm going to end with very quick 20 second wrap up comments from you. This is the first time we're in quite literally legislating a conscience. Whether you like it or not, we expect you to contribute to society. Is this going to work out well for India and India Inc? Or is this just going to become one yet another tick, tick box thing through which, you know, 20 smart lawyers will find loopholes and ways to get around this? What do you think, Mr. Gupta? My view is it's a, it's a moot point. It depends on the intention of the, of the board. If they really want to make a meaningful difference, here is an opportunity. But if you don't but really want... that wanted to make a meaningful difference were doing it even without Section 135. No, you know, so no, at least, no, at least... Section 135 going to benefit Indian society? Correct. The only way it is helping the management and the board is that there is approval in a manner of speaking that you can spend up to okay. that extent. So now they don't need to apologize to their shareholders yes, for doing this. You know, I'm they doing. say, I'm, I'm meeting a legal Everybody provision. wants they to do it. They never apologize because they always assume that it is cognate and is in the nature of a business expenditure. The past shows that this was voluntarily done also because tax was not hostile. Hmm. If the tax in the past years, and it is a prospective change, it's not a retrospective change, is to apply from the next financial year. So all most companies who have done CSR have claimed it as a business expenditure. So there was a sweetener because the tax was not and prohibited. And that has gone away now. Yes, so therefore companies, as he also says, will re rethink as to you know how this is going to impact the bottom line. So I agree, decent lawyers, sensible lawyers would not go about challenging it, but this sword on the head that yes you can get a penalty it may be a fine of you know running into some few lakhs not crores but yes it taints your name giving back to society is part of our indian culture but you can't put a gun on the head and do it all right but that's what section 135 yeah. does it puts a gun to your head yeah. thank you gentlemen for joining us on thank this you. episode of companies act thanks very much for watching we'll be back next week companies act a special presentation by the firm